All right, we're going to continue on here, and we're going to be working with something that's probably going to be a lot simpler here. We're going to be doing this uh, shoulder armor piece here for both sides. So again, we'll just start off with the uh, the box modeling. So we'll go ahead and go create polygon primitive and do a cube and do the option box for it this time. We'll go ahead and hit create, and the cube is very small, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and scale that thing up. To about roughly the right size here. I'm going to go to the side view and start working with something that will give me about the right thickness. So I'll scale it down to roughly about here. Okay. The other thing is we need the entire length of this thing. So I can imagine if this thing was bent over from about this point, this is probably getting closer to where it needs to be, something like that. And then we need a thickness from the front, so we're going to move it like this, and thickness looks fairly good. I think I'll scale it out just a little bit more for right now. And then I'm going to go to the uh, channel box over here. So I was in the modeling toolkit, but I'm just going to click over here to the channel box. And we'll go to the um, inputs for this so we can change how many divisions that we've got going down the depth this way here. So let me move this up so you can see the uh, world axis here. So the depth is going to control uh, what we've got going on here through the, which you can consider the z-axis. Um, so this this will work fine. We could move these points by hand. Uh, that's a possibility. So we could do that, move them down, rotate them, do the same for this here, kind of like that. That is a possibility. That'd be pretty quick. Um, I just wanted to show you real quick that it's possible that we could use a deformer for this. So we could uh, actually try to deform and bend this thing. Um, and I think we saw in an earlier video, deformers always sit with the animation uh, menu subset. So you can see up here we got create deformers and we will do a nonlinear and we'll do a bend like this, okay? So to get this thing kind of going, it just produces this line and it looks like nothing happens. But if we go over here to the inputs, we can do curvature, middle mouse drag that, and you can see it's starting to curve this way. So this line and this curvature gives us an indication of how it's going to bend the thing. We want it to be uh, this way, where we're gonna rotate it. I'm gonna hold down J while I rotate to snap in uh, degree increments like that. So that would be bending this way. We don't have any geometry. Let's see here, turn on wireframe on display. We don't have any geometry going through here, so that's why it's only bending these corners out. But if we rotate this thing this way and do a negative 90 here and there, then we're starting to get something that is bending for us and it's getting close to where we need it to be. Okay. So we'll do that. Um, and you can change this uh, low bound like this. If you only wanted it on one side, you could change the low bound on that. And we could change the high bound. So if you only wanted it to bend on one side of that line, comes in uh, pretty handy. Um, so when you're done with that, we can go ahead and hit this and delete the history. So again, that's under edit delete by type history or get used to the hotkey for that and that's alt shift d and we've deleted our history on that and then now this thing is kind of flattened as an object the other thing i'm gonna start talking about is if we tap three we can see a smooth mesh preview of that model and we can start to see what it'll look like if you pulled into a program like ZBrush or Mudbox and you add subdivisions to this model and it smooths out the model. What it's actually doing is just adding more geometry. And we took a look at that at the uh, earlier video when we looked at making the proxy version of the, uh, of the vehicle for this character. And it was uh, on the sail piece for that thing, the cloth for it. But um, again, we can hit three. And if we want to uh, preserve hard edges on certain edges, we can go hit F10 for edges or right click on here and say edge, double click on that and it'll give us that edge loop there. And I just hit Q for my pick tool. Sometimes your uh, move and rotate manipulators uh, get in the way. So I'm gonna hold down shift and double click on those edge loops here and then select this one here. So I've got 
that outer edge like that. And then I'm going to go to the polygon menu set and under mesh tools, there's the crease tool. So let's put that on there and you can middle mouse drag left or right to interactively change how hard an edge will be, which is uh, pretty cool. So I'll select this and this right here and here. And I'll pull that out just a little bit. And it's not exactly what I'm hoping for, but uh, I think this works okay right now for this for this edge here. And then now I need to uh, start to uh, tweak this thing with the verts. Move this thing over about here. And we can always put this back to one. I think I'm I'm not going to be working with this smooth the smooth version of this currently. I'm just going to work with uh, pure geometry. Sorry, I'm trying to go to the front view here. And so I will just put something right about here. You can see that front edge by our drawing. I'll try to match that up a little bit better. So then we've got um, this edge here in the front. I'll we'll pull that forward a bit more. like this and we'll take this and move it up here a little bit more and move this forward a bit more like this and now we could go uh, I did set up a, a back view for this so I'll have to take my image planes and turn off the front view and turn on the back view and I showed how to set all that up uh, when we looked at setting up image planes um, so then at that point, I might have to go to uh, one of these cameras that I've got here that um, I was using for the front and then just go to panels, orthographic, and then go to my back view. And then now I can start to uh, work with these points back here. Let's tap five. And then this is our little guy that we've got here for the stand in for that. So I can just hide him real quick like that. And let's just move these points. Like this. And tap four. Let's try to get this matched up a little bit better and through here as well. So I think that's starting to look fairly good. Um, I'm going to just tweak this out just a little bit to make it look a little bit better. And the other thing I'm going to do is just call this a uh, shoulder guard or something like that. And underscore L. And then I'm going to uh, freeze the transformations on it. So modify freeze transformations and then I'm going to reset the transformations. Uh, hold on real quick. I know why that happened, because when I did the freeze transformations, didn't have on translate, rotate, it didn't uh, zero those out. So I hit apply for that. And then now I will do reset transformations and I'll put my uh, origin down here for the uh, pivot point. And then now I can go to edit, duplicate, special, and let's check the option box just to make sure I've got this negative scale on X set up with instance. So now I've got, uh, this is my right version of this. Okay. And I don't need my back image plane anymore. I'll hide that. I'll bring back my front image plane. So again, just to bring something back, it's uh, shift H. If you do control H hides, just get really used to that. You're going to be using that quite a bit. Okay. So this is starting to look pretty good. And um, what we talked about before was that we should be working in a manner that we're working with uh, fewer points and fewer geometry at the very beginning stages. And it makes uh, life a bit easier whenever you want to add more geo to things and start uh, rounding out shapes a bit more. So I think that'll come into play pretty good here. Um, so this is our base shape here. Um, we already looked at, if we hit F8, 
shift right click and we can use the insert edge loop tool and we can just slide that thing along here so we've got uh, a new edge loop and we've got new geometry to work with so let's take advantage of that and we can take those points and move them uh, forward a bit and down a little bit and you can see now we're starting to build a bit more curvature that way since we have a f you know flat object like this we don't really need to do much but we could you know if it was if we wanted a little bit of rounding then you can pull those points up and you can see how it's starting to take that flat shape and starting to round it a little bit now but really we only want to take these points and kind of move them and build up a little bit more curvature uh, this way what we really need is more geo through here 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 and here because this is very faceted right in through this area like this I'm going to take my edge pull this down and just make sure that curvature is working again what I was talking about is you need to really check these things in uh, a lot of different angles so once I started looking at it in a different view it wasn't working so well so I'll do um, F8 shift right click and we'll use that insert edge loop tool again and roughly put this in the middle here like that okay so now we've got this new geo to work with and let's go to the side view and what we can do is drag these points we'll just start trying to uh, build some better curvature we might put it on the rotate tool and then just rotate it this way just a little bit bring this up bring these down slightly like this and you can see with just that little bit of manipulation we can start to get uh, some curvature on there so again I'm going to check the shapes from a bunch of different vantage points and make sure everything's kind of working all right so I'm just grabbing that edge there that loop and pushing it a little bit and I'll pull these in just slightly like that okay and it feels like this is starting to uh, work fairly well move this up move this up a little bit here and I'll take this edge and I'll pull it down just slightly right there like that hit F8 I'm going to delete history alt shift D like that and this is starting to look uh, better um, so I know this is this would probably be good for like the proxy stage but I'm going to show you um, I'm going to tap three and you can see what that looks like with smooth mesh preview but I'm going to I'm going to show you if we started adding some beveling to these edges so if we hit F10 and select you know just double click this edge to get this loop going down here and hold on shift and keep adding I want to bevel these outer edges that you see here like this I don't want to bevel this edge and this edge because I want it to feel as if it's kind of got curvature going around and it's not a super hard edge we'll take a look at that first and see if that works and I'll add that there so I've got my outline here once I got those edges highlighted shift right click and we've got a bevel edge there's options for this so you can talk about the uh, you know let's just reset this real quick and see the width on this might be 0.5 uh, segments one uh, I'll leave it on that for now let's hit apply and you can see that width was pretty thick it's a bit much for what I'm looking for so if I put that down to 0.25 it should get smaller and if we do 0.1 that's getting a bit closer to uh, what I want there and I'll hit undo again and you can see if we change the segments on this thing we can up the amount of uh, divisions that are going to happen on this thing I really only want uh, one okay so even after you create those bevels it's possible that you can get back to those options over here so uh, you saw I think it's this fraction is yeah that's the uh, distance that you saw here and also the segments if you wanted to get back to that you could do that as long as you have the history on it but I usually like to get things set up the way that I want them and let's put this back at point 
I'll do 0.15. Uh, I like to get everything kind of set up and then just delete the history. Alt Shift D to delete history on that and everything should be kind of set uh, for this. And I'm going to do one more uh, glance over on this thing and kind of make sure all my edges and just make sure the geometry is making sense. It's kind of got, you don't want uh, what they call like wobble in your geometry. So you can see I got this weird kind of curvature. Um, could be something you're looking for, but I know that's not what I'm looking for in my shape. Uh, so you could you could use the excuse that uh, the metal's been kind of worn and beat beat up, but really I want those shapes to look a little bit a little bit nicer. Um, so we looked at if you hit F8 for object mode and you tap three, you can see with the uh, smooth mesh preview because I built those bevels on this thing. You can see what it does to the geometry now, and I'll turn off uh, wireframe on uh, shaded, and you get a nice kind of smooth look, and then you get, uh, you know, still a little bit of hard edge for the bevel, and that's because when we smooth this thing out, you've got edges that are really close to each other, and when it smooths, it has to try to retain those edges and, and hold them. The larger the space in between the the uh, the polys, you know, the bigger the the curvature is going to be on that. So, and if you like the shape, then we could always go to modify, convert, smooth mesh preview to polygons. And remember, we can come over here and change the divisions and drop that down a little bit. But you see, we're getting a nice shape for that. But this is starting to get a to be more of a high-res object instead of a low-res object. So we'll put this back down, divisions of zero, and I'll just delete history, Alt-Shift-D, and we're back to where we're at before. So um, this one, we can go normals and harden the edges. We could look at it that way. and Or we could do this, we could say normals, soften edge, and get an idea of what it might look like in-game. And you see, because of that bevel, the beveling picks up nice uh, the lighting angles and gives us a nice rim kind of a, a highlight along there. So um, definitely a big giveaway for CG things or if there's a super crisp line and there's no kind of bevel because everything in, in the real world has some kind of imperfection and light kind of picks up off even edges. But in the computer you got these super crisp hard edges that just doesn't happen in nature so that's why things tend to look a little weird and a little CG-ish. Um, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to smooth the normals on this guy too as well. Shift uh, right click in object mode and go over here and do soften edge. So again this is getting closer to what it's going to look like um, in game right. So I've been showing you that you can harden your edges and look at them that way but it is possible to have everything be smooth and you can see it as if it was going to go into game and that's you know the, how you want it to look going into game um, but for the modeling purposes you can come up here to shading and then do flat shade all and you can see it's just a display toggle that happens in the viewport so then when you're modeling it'll always display these hard edges and when you're done you can go turn that off and you can do smooth shade all like that and you can get an idea of what it's going to look like in game but as you do modeling processes you're probably going to see these weird hard edges just pop up and then you're always going to have to go shift right click and then soften the edge to get rid of that stuff okay and again I was getting into it through it that through that menu by shift right click there but uh, we can go to the polygon menu subset and just go to normals and soften edge something else about normal sometimes you might get some weird just black goo in certain areas and you might have a problem uh, usually to fix that i'll select the object and then you go to normals and just say unlock normals and then um, it should release that and then after that you can delete history and then go to normals and then go soften edge or harden edge and it usually cleans up the problem if things are really really bad and for whatever reason it just seems like there's errors with your model and that happens every now and then 
try to take your model and export it as an OBJ and say, so file export selection option box and then go to OBJ and export that out. If you don't see your OBJ option uh, for exporting, you're going to go to Windows Setting Preferences and then go to Plugins Manager and make sure that OBJ, I always have to find this thing, make sure that that's set to load and the auto load and you probably want to make sure your FBX exporter is uh, set up as well. So load and make sure that that's set to auto load as well. Um, so once you export the thing out, you can take the version that you got and hide it and then you go file import, import it back in as an OBJ and then use this single object uh, tag here. Make sure you do that. That's pretty important no matter what you're doing. If it's uh, ZBrush, Mudbox, whatever, uh, make sure that this is selected and then import that thing back in and usually that cleans up any kind of problems and you can soften the edges and stuff like that. So that's that's an extreme cases. So Again, there's a couple different methods to deal with uh, this, uh, you know, if there becomes errors in your model for shading and you just can't figure out why it's not doing soft or hard edges. So there's that, but if you end up having um, your model and it's uh, not joined together, we looked at how we can combine models together and if there's border edges on things or if there's uh, like this face, if I duplicated this thing, uh, by doing an extrude face and just left it there like that and forgot about it, that can cause some problems. See how there's um, hard edge shading on this thing and you would sit there and go, okay, I'm going to go and soften the edge and you're like, okay, I've done everything I could possibly do and exported this thing out and can't figure out why that's happening. It's because there's actually a face sitting directly over the top of another face like that and that's definitely not a good thing so in extreme cases if you had to get rid of that face like that you would have to uh, use the append to polygon like delete it and use the append to polygon tool so shift right click we've looked at this tool before but this is where it comes in handy if you get these little problems like this you can delete a face and then get to it so again shift right click in object mode append to polygon tool and then we can just click on that open border like that go across and then now that's fixed like that we might still have the hard edges and now we should be able to delete history uh, shift right click soften edge like that and the last thing I'll check on this it seems like uh, maybe there's still a face on there So I'll delete that thing. I'm just gonna look on the inside, and make sure there's nothing on there. Uh, actually, what was happening when I when I extruded that thing, I think there's a little sliver of polys along the edge here. So if I pull this out, yep, that's what's going on. Um, it's so small those polys that were along there, you couldn't even see the thing. So I could drag this thing out and. Um, I could grow my selection, shift, and then the little like arrow kind of key, that's the uh, period key, and that'll grow the selection out, and I could delete the uh, face, and then I could re, you know, go back through and do the append polygon tool. That's one way of fixing that. But let's take a look at if we've got this issue here like this. So we've extruded this thing out, found this problem. I could take that face, and it convert the selection types from face to edges so select it and hit control F10 and then now I got those edges and we should be able to delete them and just get rid of them like that but I accidentally had some other things selected let's deselect those edges and then right click on here and say edge hold down control and just take away from the selection on there and then now let's hit backspace and you can see it just got rid of it so there's multiple ways to deal with those uh, issues and those problems but uh, you'll you should get familiar with each one of those ways the last thing that we can do to check for uh, bad geo is there's under under mesh cleanup we can go to the cleanup tool 
and we can tell it to let's reset the settings we can tell it to just select matching polygons and we can tell it to look for faces with more than four sides some you know some game engines have a problem with that um, we could do that and let's select this head because I know that one's got some more of this stuff if you hit apply you can see how it'll pre-select some of those faces that are going to have some problems um, and if we had some what they call lamina faces remember I showed you how there was a face sitting directly on top of another face and you probably wouldn't be able to see that you could use this lamina faces like that and if it picks up anything it'll it'll show it and highlight it and then you can kind of delete those faces or kind of uh, investigate that area a little bit better and kind of fix that area up but um, there we go for the uh, shoulders. I'm gonna, just going to take this and for organizational purposes, group these things together and give it a name for shoulder like that. And then just middle mouse drag it up into the outliner to rearrange the, uh, the area. So I'm going to take everything I'm working with that I'm building and just group this thing, control G, and just call this build temp. Um, M key's not working again. So just do that for now. So we've got a group that I'm doing for everything that I'm working on and while I'm just kind of uh, work in progress with this guy and you've, you know, I've got the negative instances and then everything else like that. And so now we've got this much of our character and I think you've got a few more tools at your disposal for making sure you're uh, making clean geometry and let's go to the orthographic front view for this guy because I had that on the back view never switched it back over and we've got this here we've got the shading problem I'll hide him real quick bring it back and just get the scene in a nice state before I save it for the uh, next iteration. Say file, save scene as, and make sure that we're giving that next iteration on the file like this, save scene as, and we should be ready, to, good to go on this. So there's this section here, and the next video we'll conquer another part of this character.